Let's turn to Ambassador Dennis Ross now, former special assistant to President Obama and Middle East coordinator during the Clinton and George W. Bush administrations. It's great to see you again, as now a senior fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Dennis, the, the, the White House says that President Biden told the Israeli prime minister that he supports a ceasefire today. That's always been true. What American president wouldn't support a ceasefire? He didn't call for anything. So actually, there's been no movement at all, has there? Well, I think there has been a little movement. I think the fact is he was not calling for a ceasefire before. The accent before was on Israel's right to self-defense, which should be a given. Israel's been hit by more than 3,000 rockets uh, from Hamas. This is from a territory, Gaza, that Israel withdrew from 100% and didn't impose uh, a, an embargo on Gaza uh, from 2005 to 2007 until Hamas took it over. So it's being hit with rockets from a place it withdrew from. So it's not a surprise the president would focus on Israel's right of self-defense. Now he's still focusing on Israel's right of self-defense, but he's also saying he supports a ceasefire. The implication is probably what's going on behind the scenes in their conversations is uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I know you want to restore deterrence. What's your, what's your definition of that? What's your end goal here? What other targets do you still have to hit? You know, the longer this goes on, you run the risk of, in a sense, hitting targets that kill more people and can move the international public opinion against Israel. You're in the right when you're defending yourself, but there, this can flip at a certain point. So I suspect when you hear the term calling for a ceasefire, we're seeing uh, an evolution of what's probably being said in private, not just in public. You know, the Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders says the U.S. aid to Israel needs to be revisited. The Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says it's, it's cr he's critical of the U.S. aid to the Palestinians. Uh, should, should funding be on the negotiating table here to end the fighting? I don't think so. I think what's going to be on the negotiating table right now is, you know, how do you not just bring this to an end, but what comes next? If all we do is go back to the status quo ante, we're just basically biding time until this happens again. So I think there needs to be a strategy not only for a ceasefire, I think there needs to be a strategy for what comes next. My own recommendation would be we should be prepared to mobilize a massive uh, reconstruction package for Gaza, provided that Hamas gives up its rockets. No one is going to invest in rebuilding Gaza, which is going to need it even more now, if the reality is that Hamas, at a time of its choosing, can do this all over again. So I do think the issue of assistance should be out there, but I think it's time for us to say, let's rebuild Gaza, but we can't rebuild Gaza if Hamas is going to hold on to its rockets. You, you can't keep politics out of this, though the cycle seems to be repetitive over the years and decades. There's always politics involved. In this case... Uh, Hamas is looking to, de to find its way into a power vacuum as, as it relates to the Palestinian Authority. And Bibi Netanyahu has a long list of problems of his own and a lack of ability, at, at least at the moment, to form a coalition government. The, the politics sort of play to both sides for this to at least be happening, don't they? Yes. I mean, uh, regrettably, in the case of Hamas, they, because of what was happening in Jerusalem, they saw an opportunity to seize the mantle of Palestinian leadership, to claim they were defending Jerusalem, even though when this is all over, nothing will have changed in Jerusalem, and the conditions in Gaza will be even, uh, even more abominable. I mean, they'll be really grinding poverty. On, on, the, on the Israeli side, we were about to see an alternative government emerge. Uh, the reality of this conflict uh, has certainly put that on hold, and in all likelihood, we're not going to see, I don't think that Prime Minister Netanyahu will be able to put together a new government, but we're almost certainly headed for a fifth election. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.